This is Charlie Rowe of the U.S. Forest Service. How you doing, Charlie? Very well. Good to see you, Dave. You've got quite an office here, Red uh, River Gorge. It's a great <laughs> office to report to every day, isn't it? And uh -huh. today we're going to be talking about the trails uh -huh. and this great group of volunteers back here. Uh, tell me how that all got started. Well, as soon as I come to the Forest Service, we realized that volunteers was going to be an important part of getting the work done. It's just not the workforce for this type of labor. And people would come to me and volunteer individually. Well, over time, some of my volunteers would say, hey, let's take down some names of the individual ones. Hopefully we started accumulating a list of folks that come regular. And by about 1998, we incorporated, they incorporated it into the Red River Gorge Trail Crew, a group of about 500 people that are on my mailing list now who gather the second Saturday of every month to come do this work with me. Winter and summer, we go all year long. The only thing that will stop us would be a dangerous situation such as high winds or deep snow. Now, why do you need so many people to maintain the trails? It's the nature of the work. You, if you can't get a bulldozer or a backhoe to a log to do it that way, you can get 20 people out there and pick it up. Uh, we sometimes just do coordination exercises and lift up a car to prove we can do it. And it's the nature of the work that requires the multiple people. So you can have more people cutting and clearing, pulling the log, doing whatever needs to be done. You were talking about that one tool that was invented by a Forest Service employee. Yes. That, what is that again? <laughs> that is a firefighting tool. Ed Pulaski invented that back in the early 19, 1910, I believe, when they was having some very bad fires out west. It was a tool they needed to be able to both chop and dig fire line into the ground. As it's turned out, it's a very valuable tool for, tool work, for trail work. Now, do the volunteers need any kind of training, uh, or do they just show up and no. sign them? If you come up, show up with a good attitude, you're gonna have a good day. All you need to do is with the little thing, the things need to be done, we'll teach you in the safety briefing, the leaders will show you throughout the day. Now, as you advance into the program, you'll, you'll become a leader, which you've learned some trail techniques that you'll parlay to the other folks, or some other folks have advanced to be actual chainsaw operators. This is Morgan Weinrich from Louisville. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? All right, uh, you are a volunteer and one of the leaders so uh, you've been doing this for a while, I take it. Yes, since 2008, I've been one of the leaders with the trail crew. What do you have to do as a leader? Basically, uh, we go through training. Um, a lot of that is based on it's, uh, safety information. And also um, there are particular rules that we have to follow because we are under the Forest Service. We provide something that if it were paid for, it would be very cost prohibitive. Personally, it's important, you know, for me, I get satisfaction out of coming out here. And, um, you know, I mean, it's great to be in the woods, but then also the personal satisfaction of volunteering and giving back. Our mission as a group is to provide safe access to the forest. This is, this is public land and everybody's land. And to be able to enjoy it and not destroy it, there needs to be a good trail system to get people out to the sites that they want to see. Our mission is to keep the trails in good shape, proper grades, cleaned up, clear, so people don't have to make routes through the woods to get to where they want to, and it is safe for them. They don't crawl through the woods and get snake bit or get lost. Right. Right. This is a heavy, heavily used uh, uh, public land, so you got a lot of hikers out here. It does get a quite a bit of use. That's another reason it's important to keep the trail system in good good order so it don't wear out and keep it clear so they don't get lost whatever ever which way. I've got Kelly Quaid with me. Kelly, when you're out there uh, cleaning or maintaining a trail and you, you've moved a big log or you've sawed something and you set it over to the side, what, what happens to it then? To retain as much of the natural beauty and of the, the gorge as you can. So most of the time it's just left to biodegrade on its own. Keeping the trail safe is very important. But now if we see um, plastic and you know things like that, we will pick that up. We always take bags with us, put the trash in there and haul that out. Anything that can degrade is typically left to degrade. It's as hard as you want or as easy as you want. Um, I have found times that some of us will just be sitting chitty chatting on the trail, learning about each other, what brought us here. Other times we're hauling big logs. Everybody is very friendly and welcoming. We, there are folks from all walks of life. 
all ages of life, um, with different backgrounds, different experiences, but a common love of the outdoors and wanting to give back to, I guess just to, to, to take care of nature because um, the resource, we just don't have the resources from a government standpoint to take care of the gorge like it needs to be done. We have three objectives, fun, productivity, and safety. Safety's on top, the other two are interchangeable. The typical day consists of people meet at the meeting time. It changes a little bit out through the year due to the, the, the daylight. And the location, we try to meet close to where we're gonna work. We'll have our safety briefing, we'll, we'll, we'll get our first aid kits, we'll sign the work, then we'll hit the trail, we have a blast. We threw out the trail, we'll do our work, folks just get really involved. But then the fun really starts at the end of the day. We have our own campground that we go back to and every outing is followed with a potluck dinner and a fireside social. It's being it is a campground, many of us will stay tonight. About two weeks before each event, I send out an email with the information of where we're meeting and what we're doing and no other registration is required to show up if you want to. We always like new people, make new friends, and we could always use more volunteers for more projects. And if folks that think they may be interested in it, you'd be amazing how easy it is to join in with these great groups of people and feel like you've just known them forever. It would just be nearly impossible for this type of work to get done without the great volunteers we have.